No, I'm serious. Times are changing. I mean, the, the goals of the old generation were to pay off their mortgage. Of course, the goals of the new generation are to actually get a mortgage. I was in Tampa a few years ago. We had a big workshop, a few hundred people in the room. I walked in the room, and Joe Bartera was sitting in the back row. He's one of my associates. And Joe introduced me to a young lady he had met the night before. And she came up and said, Mr. Kime, it's, it's really a pleasure to meet you. Uh, your associate here uh, bought me a drink last night. And I said, really? I would have bought you eight. Everybody in the room laughed, thought it was very funny. I had a heck of a time, though, explaining to my wife later what exactly I meant by that. Now, normally I'm not at a loss for words. So what exactly did you mean by that? I would have bought you eight, Lauren. Well, um, uh, 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 didn't have an answer. I wrote a book a few years ago called Life Lessons from the Backseat of My Car. I put my foot in my mouth a lot. I do a lot of stupid things, and then, of course, they become stories. And I try and learn something or learn a lesson out of each thing that I do wrong. And unfortunately, I do a lot of things incorrectly and learn a lot of lessons. And I did learn a lesson from this experience. I learned that if you're in a committed, loving relationship with someone you truly care about, that you should never, ever, ever say something like that to a, another woman when your wife is in the room. It's a bad, bad thing. Okay, now let's talk about... Misleading real estate terms. You know what misleading real estate terms are? We call it puffing. That's when you use the word like cozy instead of small to talk about a, a small house or charming instead of old. Let's you go over a few of my favorite ones. Cozy is one of my favorite terms. It means the home is too small for human habitation. Remember the 19th century when a family of six could live in one room? This is the perfect house for them. How about intimate? That is the only home that is actually smaller than cozy. These homes are perfect if you're roughly the size of a garden home. Charming, if you're used to living without indoor plumbing, this is the perfect home for you. It comes complete with old woodwork, wide molding, and kitchen cabinets that date somewhere before the Great Depression. The cobwebs are an added bonus. Conveniently located, it's at a busy intersection where traffic noise is so heavy you'll have to sleep with earplugs. Uh, easy highway access is actually worse than conveniently located. Here you're going to have to sleep with pillows duct taped to your head. Handyman special, it may be so special that not even the walls are solid, they're probably ready to collapse. Uh, unique, the home may be so unique that it'll only appeal to a small percentage of the population. In fact, the number of buyers who appreciate the architecture of this particular unique home is so small that we're still hoping that some crazy person from Southern California takes a job re relocation to the area and buys the home. Easy to show. It's easy to show because the prior owners vacated the home as soon as they heard the gunfire down the street. The doors don't really shut properly anymore, so pretty much anybody can go in and out anytime they'd like. How about only one owner? And he didn't make a single update in the 47 years since he built the house. Freshly painted with a single coat of cheap paint. Cul-de-sac living. That's another way of saying you're going to live at the end of a dead end. Friendly neighborhood. In fact, several busybodies will watch your every move, and the creepy one across the street actually has a telescope focused on your house at all times. Country living. Everybody loves that term, right? Country living. We hope you like spending a lot of time driving because this home is located so far from civilization, you're going to have to raise your own animals to survive. City living. Lock the doors with all three deadbolts because it's not safe to go outside. Needs some TLC. Everybody likes needs some TLC. Beware, you might fall through the floor. Water view. Everybody's heard that one. It's an old joke. Of course, to actually see the water, you have to be on the second floor, on a stepladder, hanging out the window, and if it's a really clear day, you might be able to see a corner of the uh, water beyond. Waterfront means you're located in a flood zone. Not a drive-by, because the exterior is so hideous, you're likely to drive by without even stopping. You might even look out the rearview mirror to see if there's condemned signs in the yard. And you must see the inside. This is a variation of not a drive-by. The outside looks like it's been decorated for Halloween, but it's currently March. The Adams family actually turned this home down as a possible spot to live. Okay, today I'm going to show you exactly how it goes between a buyer and a seller each time they get together and meet. I'm stealing some stuff from Jeff Dunham and probably breaking a bunch of different laws. We have to zoom in pretty tight because obviously I can't throw my voice like Jeff Dunham does. He's wonderful. This is Walter and this is Ahmed the dead terrorist. Uh, I think they even have sounds. Ahmed. 
Uh, Ahmed. Okay. Walter wants to sell his house. Hi, I'd like to sell my house, and I understand you're a realtor. What will you do to sell my house fast, but at a price $200,000 higher than it's worth because I have the nicest house on the entire planet? I kid you. Will you hold an open house for me every single weekend? And will you take a commission of 1% and negotiate lower if uh, it doesn't sell fast enough? I kid you. I'd like you to call me every single day with feedback, with an update, and advertise in the most expensive newspapers in the entire planet. I kill you. I'd like a website just for my property. I'd like a video tour of my property. And I'd like you to take all my calls at midnight, on weekends, when you're on family vacation, when you're out with your family, anytime I want. I kill you. Ah, oh, maybe I'll just list with a friend or relative. Isn't it funny what home sellers say to screw up their own transactions? Everybody had at least one home seller that was absolutely crazy. We had a property for sale a couple of years ago. A beautiful house, really neat property with an oversized garage, but the backyard backed up to an elevated highway. Have you ever had that problem? About 50 or 60 feet above the house, maybe 40 feet back, is this major interstate highway with cars rushing back and forth. And all you hear outside is the noise. Why well, buyers that came to look at it, they pulled up from the front, you could still hear the noise, uh, and it was a real problem. We walked through, they seemed to like the inside of the house, and we walked out the back door. The owner came out with us, and the buyer is standing there looking at the highway, looking back at the owner, looking at the highway, and he says, I don't think I could live with this, talking about the noise, of course. And the owner, of course, didn't quite understand what he was saying. The owner said, I'm so tired of people saying something like that. I'm so tired of people getting upset. This is not a problem. This is not a big deal. It's only been one time since I've lived here for the last 30 years that a car has driven off that highway and flipped over and landed in the yard and crashed against the house. Only once, and that is really rare. I don't see why people are so upset about it. It's shocking what people do. We had another case a few years later that uh, we had a house for sale at a busy intersection, one door off the intersection, really neat property. I showed it twice, and they really liked it. I brought them back for a third time. We were going to head back to the office to write up an offer. We're coming out the front door to get my car to drive off and write the offer, and the owner pulls in behind us, gets out of his car and says, please, go back in the house, please. I just want to talk to you for a minute and go back in the house. All right, we reluctantly turn around and go back in. He shuts the door behind him, and he says, did you hear that? hear what? Nothing. This house is so well built that you don't hear anything inside. I know a lot of people complain about the traffic noise, but you will hear nothing inside. I have solid steel doors in this house. It's all brick. You will not hear anything inside. I said, that's, that's great. Let's go. He said, no, you don't understand. And he started panicking because he thought that we might be trying to get away because the traffic noise was a real problem. He said, you don't understand. It is so quiet in here that we have a major accident on this corner out front about every week and we don't even hear it because this house is so well built and we're looking at each other the buyers and I thinking this is great that's wonderful I say to him let's uh, let's go and we'll talk about it later and the owner says no, no no you don't understand this house is so well insulated so hard to hear anything outside when you're in here it's so quiet just last year my son's best friend was pulling out of our driveway got t-boned Pulling out of the driveway, his car flipped over on our lawn. He died. The ambulances came, the fire trucks came, everybody was in our front yard, lights flashing. We never heard a thing. That's how well built this house is. So we leave, we get back in the car, and all the way back to the office, the husband's sitting in the back seat saying, Well, honey, we're going to have to get a big shop vac so we can suck all the blood out of the lawn every time we have a major accident at the corner, dear. Of course, they didn't buy the house. You may have heard this one before, but one of my worst experiences with buyers was a buyer that had a fear of ceramic dolls or porcelain dolls. Uh, the husband explained to me that everybody's got an unnatural fear. Some have a fear of heights, some have a fear of enclosed spaces. His wife had a fear of ceramic dolls or porcelain dolls. And she was getting help, but she had this um, emotional uh, belief that at night they would come to life and, you know, 
She was scared of them, and she didn't want to see any houses that had emotion that had uh, ceramic dolls or porcelain dolls in them. So he asked me, next time we go out and look at houses, can you preview them ahead of time and make sure there's no ceramic dolls in the house? I said, no problem. Well, the week went by. I didn't get to it. And then Thursday, the day I was supposed to go out and preview them before taking the, these clients out, I had a fight with a couple of attorneys. Uh, it was pouring. I just didn't make it out. What I did do was call all four agents and ask them, are there any porcelain dolls or ceramic dolls in the house? Three of the agents called me back and said, no, absolutely not, no problem, we talked to our owners. The fourth one was an estate, and it was empty, so I wasn't real concerned. I know, that's where we always go wrong. So, went through the first three houses with no problem whatsoever, and this is late October, it's close to Halloween, of course. We get to the fourth house, nice little twin, and they're typically set up with living room, dining room, kitchen, and then three bedrooms on the second floor. So I open the lock box, it's dark outside, open the door, and then typically there's a light switch right inside the door. This one didn't have one. So I tried peering through the darkness, I didn't see any furniture, so I thought that was a good sign. And I could see a light switch on the far wall over to the right, probably between what used to be the living room and dining room. They must have opened it up to make this big 25 or 30 foot long room. So I carefully walked across the floor, it's nice old hardwood, to where the light switch was, and the buyers followed me about halfway into the room. And at that point, I flipped on the light switch, and you can't make this stuff up. Down both sides of the room, there were three rows of shelves, and another set of three shelves at the end of the room. All of the walls were completely covered with ceramic dolls. I took a step back and went, oh my lord. At that point, what I think happened was these hardwood beams ran across the or hardwood flooring ran across the entire room from front to back and my guess is that these old loose floors I hit one and it radiated across the room but in front of the back wall was a porcelain doll that was probably about four foot tall and as I stepped back the porcelain doll appeared to move forward the buyer freaked screamed cried ran out the door husband ran after took a taxi and I never saw them again so you have to do what you say you're going to do in life. Unfortunately, sometimes we make mistakes and it costs us not just a piece of business, but some of our reputation as well. Well, we're in real estate, so we'll talk about prospecting. Very important term. A number of years ago before I was married, I, it was a few days before Valentine's Day and I did not have a date. So I went to the local florist and I said I'd like a dozen long stem roses. And here's a list of 12 ladies. I'd like one sent to each of them. And I'd like the same card written out and sent to each of them. And the florist looked at me and said, you're kidding, right? No, that's called prospecting. Show them what you've got, give them something of value, and try and hopefully attract attention. And it worked very well. I got a number of dates. Now, follow-up is something completely different. I met my wife for the first time at a pool party. And she was wearing a cute bikini, so of course I asked her out. And she, of course, said, I don't think so. I thought, wow, that's kind of harsh. So the next day, I found out where she worked, and I sent her flowers hoping that she'd go out with me. And she called and said, thank you very much for the flowers. They are beautiful. But I really meant, no, I'm not interested. I said, all right, not a problem. The next day, I sent her flowers again. And she called and she said, listen, no, it means no. Don't send me flowers again. Don't contact me ever again. So the next day, of course, yeah, I sent her flowers again. And she called and said, listen, this is stalking. I'm thinking about calling the police. I said, hold on a second. You're getting into the real estate business. That's what you told me last night or the other night. And you're affiliating with what I think is the wrong company for you. We have a better commission structure. We've got better educational opportunities. We have profit sharing. What I'd like to do is at least sit down with you and discuss your career. I won't ask anything personal. I won't talk about uh, a possible date or anything like that. I'd just like to talk to you about the real estate industry and what my company can do to benefit you. And she said, that would be fine. I said, that's great. Why don't we meet for dinner? I'll pick you up at six. That's called follow-up. 